is delaying. Okay, now let's now we can proceed like this. We just took a look at one example which we spoke of future operating losses and then future repairs. And now we are on one last contracts. What are one last contracts? Simply speaking, without going further, just understand that if you say something is one last, if it's a contract, it means that maybe at least two parties may be involved. And if something is one last, it means that it just favors one side, leaving the other one actually uh, in total. So what to know that when a simple speaking, a one last contract is just a contract that results in a win lose situation. Both sides do not win. One wins and the other loses. Let's say you're just trying to enter into a contract that to which you would be entitled $60 million. But maybe the contract requires three years. But maybe after two years, we find out that until the completion of the contract, you would have actually used $80 million. So you find out that, oh, so I will get $60 million, but I will use $80 million. That means I will have a loss of $20 million. That means that's a win -lose, that is a win-lose contract, win-lose situation. You are just trying to do something for others. Others will gain what you're just trying to construct, but you will end up having the loss. So the company would usually ask itself, oh, why wasting time? The company will take a look and ask itself, should I really complete this contract? Should I really honor this contract? Or should I just terminate the contract and pay the penalty? It's just like that. So that's what we speak of the one rush contract. The contract is one rush when you encounter such a thing. That's why we say that Stephen defines the one rush contract as the one in which the unavoidable cost of meeting the contract exceed the economic benefits expected to be received and right. I think I've given a fine example. All right, so the entity asks itself, in case the entity finds itself in that situation, a provision should be recognized for the present obligation under the contract. And how do you obtain this obligation? The obligation should be the lower, should be the lower of the following, because it's either you fulfill the contract or you terminate the contract and suffer any penalty. So anything that will be lower, the entity will choose that. Let's say by continuing to fulfill the contract, you will, you will incur $20 million extra. But by terminating the penalty, you would have to pay $25 million. So you'd have to say, oh, let's just complete it. So as to save that $5 million. So something like that. That's what we speak of the one rush contract. We have to recognize a provision directly, right? So it's just that example. And just go to here. We are told here that some assets may have been bought specifically for use in fulfilling the one last contract. You know, there's something like that. For example, maybe I would try, I would try to give a certain example, yeah, a bit different, but just to finish up on this. Some assets may you, you may you might have acquired an asset just to fulfill a certain contract, but then you find out that the contract has been cancelled. If you cancel the contract, that means you will have assets from which you won't be able to generate much amount from them. And so that's also an indicator of impairment. And if there's an indicator of impairment, we should make the impairment review before any separate provision is made for the contract itself. So before even you make any contract provision, you, to, you should have to check for that first, right? All right, I'll just let, let me just show you something here. I've seen something and maybe I need to write it. You know, you will come and learn something called IFRS 15, which is revenue recognition from contract to its customers, right? Imagine that I have a contract uh, which has the price of, let's say, uh, which has the price of a thousand, or let's say a hundred million dollars, just like that. And actually, maybe the contract has just started at the beginning of the year. And maybe you find that cost incurred so far during the year, you've just incurred cost of let's say uh let's say a cost of of 20 million just like this and you are told that uh the progress of the contract just in this first year maybe progress of the contract equals to 45 percent this is the 45 percent the progress of the contract maybe uh for the five percent and you are asked maybe uh to show what you would do in the income statement as well as the statement of financial position now we usually do this if the contract you are doing the contract uh, for, for third parties, maybe you could say this is revenue and how would you obtain revenue? 
to obtain your revenue, you could do this way. You could say, oh, the total contract price is 100 million, but actually I've fulfilled only 45%. So you could multiply here and arrive at 45 million, just like that. And then you would come here down and say cost of sale. You guys, you won't believe it. I've collected again and it said this 75% they are also there. I think something is wrong. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let us <laughs> let, let us just finish this and tell and, and they tell you something. That something must be wrong. Yeah, I've now I've detected it. Someone must have messed with this. I, I even don't believe it. So I have 20 million here, and actually you'd obtain the profit of 45 minus 20, which is 25, right? So I would have 25. Now there could be a situation here that let's say that let's say maybe uh you expect cost that you expected, presume that you expected cost expected, cost expected to be incurred in the contract. Let's say we have 140 million. You find out that you, you expect the revenue, you expect the price of 100, but the cost expected is 140. So it shows you directly that this contract has a loss, right? It has a loss because 100 minus 140, you obtain 40 minus. If you have minus 40, here I would say that, oh, I would have revenue of 100 million times 45 percent, that's 45. And let's say maybe the cost of sales of 12 was 20, no problem. I would say something like this. But I would say that, oh, overall, this contract was having a loss, right? It has a loss. Or maybe let's say, let's say this one. Let's say the cost incurred was 60 million, for example. So I would say 45 minus 60 million, which actually would give me a loss of 15 million, just like this. I would have a loss of 15 million. And then I would ask myself, 100 million minus 140 million equals to a loss of 40 million. If you have a loss at this situation, you usually recognize it directly. So to force a loss of 40 million, while you have already recorded 15 million, then I would have to add an extra loss of 25 million and this extra also 25 million would also say would also need us to create a provision of the same amount that is 25 million because we say this is a one loss contract so this is just like an example that is a bit different it is related to revenue from contract with customer but it could also be applied somehow so this is all and uh i think the next one will be the environmental provision now guys